सारे पैसे चले गए मेरे क्यों क्या हुआ ये स्टॉक एट्टी को लिया था हाँ एंड आई बॉट इट ये नीचे ही जा रहा है सो फाइनली मैंने लॉस बुक कर लिया हाय ये तो काहे खत्म नहीं होता पचास रुपए ओवर एक्टिंग के कट व्हाट हैपेंड ये स्टॉक मैंने एट्टी को लिया था अरे बट इट्स वन ट्वेंटी राइट ना बट आई बुक दी प्रॉफिट एट हंड्रेड ना यू नो पीपल से इट्स कभी खुशी कभी गम बट इन इन्वेस्टिंग इट्स मोर और वेस्ट लाइक कम गम या ज़्यादा गम Hey folks, see you Rachna Ranade here and I welcome you all to a very important video wherein we are going to discuss when to book profits. I'm sure you could easily correlate with the pre bumper of the video and I'm sure you might have at least experienced this once in your lifetime that you know say you bought a share at 100 it went up to around 120 then you are in a dilemma ki what should I do to book or not to book is the question. not to be or not to be uh, so we have to understand in today's video as to what could be the right time when we can book profits so today we are going to talk about few strategies as to when to book profits so grab a notepad sit back relax and enjoy the video till the end but before i move on with the strategies i would want to give a big shout out to sunil and ganesh for their wonderful comments First, let's try and understand a very simple example as to what do we mean by booking profits. And I'm sure everyone watching this video is going to correlate with this. If you have experienced this, let me know in the comment section as well, right? Assume you buy a stock at hundred rupees and assume it goes and up and up till let's say one twenty. Here you are in two minds: whether to book profit or to wait for some more time. Assume you decide to wait, and you know what happens? Exactly, that's what happens. It goes down, and you are then you are like, oh man, I I wish I would have booked profits at around one twenty levels. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to talk about more from a psychological angle, plus from a technical analysis perspective, plus from something something like a portfolio management perspective, as to give you certain guiding parameters whether to book profit at a particular level or not. But wait, before we move on, two important disclaimers. Which category of stocks will this apply to? First, let's understand category of stocks. Possibility number one: these are like short term or long term in nature. So you intend to sell them like within a year or within like a year or two. That's possibility number one. Possibility number two: these could be or like long term stocks. Long term means what? Assume you have bought it with an intention to not sell it for one decade. Or pos or one example could be like you have bought it for the next generation. And if you have been watching my channel regularly. you know about these two videos right so one talks about for the next decade one talks about for the next generation for these category of investments whatever we are discussing today these discussion points do not apply these discussion points will apply only for short term or medium term category of investments that is number one disclaimer number two disclaimer whatever technical analysis i teach you or i discuss it will never work as a 100% accuracy rate out of 10 even if you are able to hit six correct trades that should be more than enough with a risk to reward ratio of 1 is to 2 okay so i hope these points are clear till now if you have found some value in the video don't forget to smash the like button and of course don't keep on watching i mean don't forget to keep on watching till the end well before we move on with the video let me tell you something i believe that every parent feels that in the summer vacation their kids should learn at least one new skill I remember when I was a child my parents used to tell me first things first you should learn how to swim why because it offers a lot of benefits number 1 you will actually enjoy the process of swimming number 2 just in case if you fall in water you will not drown and third a very important once you learn the skill you will never ever forget this in your entire life and now that i am a parent my belief that my kid should also learn one more skill which actually offers the same benefits Exactly that is the reason why I'm coming up with a master class which is called as finance for teens and it's going to be a live classroom session in Pune on 21st of May at 11 a.m. So if you want to know more about this master class don't forget to visit our website rachanaranade.com the link is there in the description box and the cost is just 499 rupees and this cost includes the admission fees for one kid and one parent So let's move on with the very first strategy it's a very simple one that is called as a target based return strategy okay so if you don't want to use your mind brain then a very simple strategy can be how much are the returns that you are getting on fds first understand that just double the amount so assume you are getting 7.5% returns on fd double that that will be what 15% returns so if you are getting 15% return on any investment of yours why would you want to wait till it becomes like 60% 70% and then you cry over oh my god it it went down and what not so simple keep it simple strategy 
double the returns of FD. If yes, cut your position, enjoy the returns. That can be simplest strategy. Possibility number one. Possibility number two can be returns based on certain technical analysis patterns. Okay, so there are a lot of technical analysis patterns which can give you the price target. It could be something like a cup and handle pattern. It could be something like a rounding bottom pattern. It could be something like a head and shoulder or an inverted head and shoulder pattern, a double top pattern, double bottom pattern and whatnot. If you are not really familiar with any of our patterns, that means that you have not checked out our courses. That's the course for you. The course is about technical analysis. Website is rachnaranade.com and that's a special coupon code for you which you can use to get some additional discount as well, right? So what I would want to do is give a specific example, let's say a cup and handle pattern example, so that you understand what could be the target price for the existing position that you have taken. So for that, let's have a look at this chart. Now let me give you the example of a cup and handle pattern, right? Uh, by the way, this is the Nifty 50 chart and here you can very clearly see the formation of a cup followed by a handle right now how do we determine what could be the target for nifty in this case so what we just have to do is draw a neckline which actually touches the ends of the oops sorry one minute let's draw the neckline from here to here okay i'm just drawing it for effort say so not drawing it with 100% precision right so this is the cup this is the handle and if this chart pattern is formed then what could be the price target? Why are we actually talking about calculation of a price target? Because that is the point at which you should ideally book your profits, okay? Either you could wait till the exact price target is hit or maybe you would want to become a little bit less greedy and book the profits just maybe half a percent, one percent prior to that, right? So what could be the target? Uh, for that, I'm just joining the bottommost part of the cup till the neckline, okay? Uh, what I typically do is I just clone this and then calculate the price target. It would be coming from the neckline till this level. So what is my price target? It is coming around 18,858. That uh, tells us that market could possibly, possibly hit an all time high, okay? But how did I, did I get this price target? This is based on a cup and handle pattern. As I discussed right now, is it necessary that every single time this price target has to hit? No, there is a possibility that this chart pattern could fail. If that be so, what is my stop loss target? Stop loss target is at the bottom part of the handle. So I would also want to mark this level. If the market touches this level, what is this level? This is around 17,500. If the market closes below this this would be a, a point at which i would want to book my losses so i hope you have understood our strategy number one as to when to book profits it could be based on either the fd based returns or possibility number two it could be based on technical analysis pattern the second strategy is based on your goals so the first like you remember was based on returns this one is based on your goals so what do we mean by that Ideally, whenever you are investing in equity markets, you invest when you have a long term goal and when your goal is coming closer to achievement, that is not the time when you should book profit. You should book profit a little bit more in advance. So what is the thought process? What is the logic behind this? I think uh, one of my dialogue which went pretty viral was I had said that insan ho ya stock market akhir jana upar hai. But that statement holds true in the longer term and never in the short term. Because in the short term, we might see certain jerks in the market. So let's assume and let's understand this with the help of a simple example. Have a look at this chart. So let's assume we have Mr. X who needed some money for his daughter's higher education and he needed this money somewhere around in April 2020 and for that he started investing since 2011. Okay, so what has he done? 2011 he started investing in let us say Nifty, it could be Nifty Index Fund uh, or it could be Nifty Bs or whatever. Okay, now you can imagine SIP nicely he's doing from 2011, 12, la 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 and now his target is coming closer. He's still investing in 2018, in 2019, in 2020. Now what has happened? Ah, crashed. All his nine years of perseverance, all his nine years of discipline investing and everything went for a toss because of the coronavirus thing. So should he have booked profits just before Corona? Should he have booked profits before that? Achha, no one knew, neither you knew it nor I knew it that Corona virus was going to happen. So ideally, what is the strategy? Strategy is to book profit at least two years before your goal 
is to be achieved so if your goal is 2020 then ideally book your profits at least two years before that that is in 2018 so what could have happened understand this person could have invested since 2011 could have kept on investing and investing and investing and in 2018 ah that's what you can see where he has quit from the market and the horizontal line that you are seeing is that he has quit from the market, he has parked his money in an FD. That's where this person is now getting a steady returns. So typical thought process is that whenever your goal is nearer, switch your investments from equity to a fixed income security because at that time, returns should not be your priority. Your priority should be having safe returns. So I hope the second strategy is also absolutely clear. And now let's move on with our third and final strategy to book profits and that is nothing but rebalancing your portfolio. Now what do I mean by this? Let's try and take a simple example again. Assume that as per your risk profile, you decide that 40% of my portfolio or uh, have a look at this. 40% of my portfolio should go in stocks and 60% should go in fixed income. Fixed income could inc include something like, let us say, FDs. It could include something like treasure, treasury bills, government securities or any other debt instrument. Okay. Now what happens is that whatever stocks you had chosen as an assumption, assume that all these stocks start performing very nicely and your portfolio now comes to such a stage that this turns to 50-50%. So your overall portfolio now looks something like this, whereas 50% is like of stocks and 50% is of fixed income. But now what you have to do, this is ideally a time to book profits. So which stocks you should book profit in for that you'll have to go back to the TA section and decide in which stocks you should book profit. But just ensure that your portfolio is rebalanced. Rebalanced to what? Back to again 40 in stocks and 60 in bonds. Now, why am I, uh, you know, discussing all these points? I'll give you again a, a practical example. One of my friends uh, who works in a very renowned IT company, I, I won't name that, and he's at a very big post in that IT company. Now, he gets ESOPs. What are ESOPs? Employee Stock Option Plans. And he gets ESOPs every single year. I am very jealous of him. But the reason is very simple, right? He gets some amazing quantity of stocks every single year and that too at a price discounted to the current market price. Now, what kept on happening? By the way, he has been working with that same IT company for almost last 20, 22 years. Now, you can imagine the amount of ESOPs that he has in the portfolio. When I asked him, how does your portfolio look like? Have a look at this. His portfolio looks something like this. He said 85% are in stocks and barely 15% is in fixed income. And the maddening point is that 85% is not in different, different stocks. Entire 85% belong to that single IT company. Now you can imagine when IT sector was in boom, he was the happiest person on earth. But when the IT crash started, whatever we are seeing right now, where Nifty is reaching almost or touching all time highs, and when entire Nifty IT is like 30% discount to its highs, that is when he experienced some sort of pain in his portfolio. So it's always desirable that you should not concentrate your portfolio in a specific stock. That is when you should decide that yes, I should book profits, have a specific portfolio balancing and act accordingly. Well, I hope we have understood all these three strategies we discussed today about booking profits. By the way, this video rec uh, request was given by one of our viewers and that is why we thought of making a separate video on this. But why did we learn about all these things? So you have to keep two major points to avoid, which are these two. First thing is emotions overpowering rational thinking. So what happens many a times you're like, Aiga, kabhi na kabhi to upar aiga. you just keep on wanting certain things to happen. And that is when your emotions are overpowering your rational thinking. So that is a clear cut avoid. And second thing is impulsive reactions. What happens is that many times a friend calls you and says, Are ye le lo, pakka le lo. And that's when you take decisions based on impulse rather than rational thinking. So both these things are to be clearly avoided. But then what are things that you should keep in mind while taking your decisions, right? First thing is a systematic approach. So you should have all your things set. You should properly think as to why are you buying? Do you have any certain fundamental reasons for that? 
something just as an example they have given amazing quarterly results there has been some government decision which directly positively impacts the company so you should have your systematic rational thinking before you buy any stock and the second thing that you should take or you should consider is you should have some sound principles of investing i'm going to make a separate video on principles of investing in this month only so i hope you have subscribed to the channel you have hit the bell icon so that you get to know whenever i upload any new video and a video specifically on investing principles i hope you like this video and if you did don't forget to smash the like button and if you want to learn more about the pakistan economy you can click here and if you want to know more about treasury bills you can click here till then take care jai hind and bye bye